Hey yo, Omni Dogs and Omni Kittens, it's Omni Dog. Thanks for tuning in. Where I'm doing root beer reviews, where I review comic books and drink root beer, because those are my two, two of my favorite things. We're going with Frost Top again. Just can't beat it. I found it and I love it. I'm sorry if you can't find it. I love it. Mmm. I did a root beer review yesterday with my daughter of real root beer and a lot of it was awful so i'm really happy to get some frost top in me let's talk about comic books a uh, character that was introduced in star wars darth vader by marvel a couple years ago if you don't have this book you don't necessarily have to buy the omnibus you can certainly buy the trades or the single issues oversized hardcovers of darth vader this is one of the best books that Marvel's released recently, um, and it introduces Dr. Afra, who I am going to be the her comic book. I'm going to be reviewing in a second. It has Dr. Afra and her murderous droids, Triple Zero and BT. Um, these, are, if you can imagine, C-3PO and R2D2 as murderers. They, they love to murder and inflict pain, but they're oh so proper about it. But it's really kind of scary. They, they um, love to uh, inflict pain and murder people. And the whole time you're kind of gasping at uh, a murderous C-3PO. But she was introduced in Darth Vader. Highly recommend you read Darth Vader. Um, but she was introduced in that, and now she has her own trade paperback. Um, and I think there is an oversized hardcover just announced. But uh, Dr. Afra is one of the best creations in the Star Wars galaxy recently. Um, and also Black Kirstan. Black Kirsten. Huh, I don't speak Wookiee. So it's Black Kirsten, who's um, a murderous Wookiee. So he's a, another new character that you get to check out right there. He's. Um, she owes him a lot of money, and so he keeps her very close. But um, Dr. Afra is an amoral arch space archaeologist who was working for Darth Vader at one point, uh, made an exit, and um, Darth Vader thinks she's dead. She's actually not dead. Um, but in this first book, she is with her father. Um, they have a contentious relationship. Her father's um, been searching for this kind of lost artifact and this lost civilization and she decides to help him the empire has other ideas and she does help him uh, it's very exciting this book um, what they go through to find what they end up finding this artifact i'll call it the artifact so i don't spoil anything um so but that's the general idea of the two books is this artifact she finds and what she ends up doing with it um it's a very well written very interesting well thought out book uh, with great art kieran gillen just does a great job with his creation of dr afra now in here's volume two um in between these two books dr afra volume two there is star wars screaming citadel which as you can see on the front is dark dark Luke Skywalker and Dr. Afra on an adventure of their own. It takes place between the two books. They sum it up in book two. You don't have to read Screaming Citadel to enjoy book two. However, I think you should get Screaming Citadel because it is really good. It involves Dr. Afra and uh, Luke setting off to find out how they can get this particular artifact to work. They go to the Screaming Citadel because there's a queen there who grants wishes once a year. If you bring her something interesting, she will grant you um, a wish. And what she ends up doing with the subject she's brought that gets you that wish is very interesting and um, pretty creepy. But uh, she's a great... Um, the queen of the Screaming Citadel is a great character too. Um, and in Screaming Citadel... Han Solo, Princess Leia, and other characters are involved besides Luke. And it's a good Star Wars book. I really enjoyed it. Um, I, I, felt, I feel that it will just kind of 
make Dr. Afra the reading experience that much better if you read this. I read this after the two books and it was still cool. You can read this in the middle of the two books and you'd enjoy it. Um, volume 2 deals with their continuing um, desire to, Dr. Afra's continuing desire to st strike it rich, make a big score, um, sell this artifact after it's been activated now. She wants to sell the art artifact and what she goes through to do that. She's always trying to hide under the radar and make sure Darth Vader doesn't find out that she's alive. Um, as I said, she's got her murder bots with her and Black Curses and Tan um, with her. And it's very good. Very, very good. I highly recommend Dr. Afra to you. Great art, great story, everything you want. Um, in a Star Wars book or just in a comic in general. So these get my strong recommendation. You will like these. I can't guarantee it because then I'd have to give you your money back. But I have a good feeling you'd like it a lot. The next book is Doctor Strange from Marvel. Even if you're not a big Doctor Strange fan, um, Jason Aaron and Chris Pachalo who is a fantastic artist, and the color palette in this book is great. Um, they write a very humanized Doctor Strange, who's a bit of a ladies' man, who has the Sanctum Sanctorum, where he hires a librarian who came to him for help. To He hires her to help sort out all his books. And the Sanctum Sanctorum is featured uh, prominently in this book through his adventures, um, and that's a place where you can't even open the refrigerator door, let alone go down to the cellar. You can't open any door there in, in, in his inner sanctum. Um, it's a really well-written book about uh, these extraterrestrial scientists that are out to kill magic and kill all the Sorcerer Supreme in every dimension, and magic stops working. Uh, and so how's Doctor Strange supposed to fix it? He and his fellow magicians have to figure out a way to fix it. There you see the fabulous magic right there from X-Men. Um, they've got to figure out a way to fix it um, without really using magic. And it's a very well thought out, really well done book. Great art. Uh, they end up um, going to the Himalayas. They end up going various places all over the place to find out how they can best equip themselves without magic and meanwhile it seems like he spends almost the entire book sick to his stomach because of all the magic he's done he's now having to pay a price for it and all the gross stuff that he has to eat it's the only thing that he can eat and Chris Pachalo does a great job of drawing it all but this is a book I highly recommend because you don't even have to um, be into Doctor Strange to enjoy this book uh, I really got a kick out of this book, and I thought it was great. Um, I especially loved that the, you can't even go into the refrigerator without there being something crazy in there that could probably devour you. Um, and then the third book, or fourth or fifth, or however many, I've lost track. This is a bit different. This is Satellite Sam. This is Satellite Sam without the um, fancy dust jacket on it from Image by... Um, Matt Fraction and Howard Chaikin. So you know Howard Chaikin, you know there's going to be tons of women in there, scantily clad, because that's how Howard Chaikin likes to draw them. Um, so it's black and white, scantily clad women, lots of swearing, lots of drinking, lots of smoking. It's about television back in the early early 50s like 50 51 52 right around there back when television was first getting going before it became color back when there was a fourth network the dumont network um and he invents a network here matt fraction does that talks about um programming satellite sam is a 15 minute kids program on the lamont I think it's the Le Mans Network, the Lamont Network, something like that. And it's about, um, it's actually, I'm wondering about its appeal to the general audience. I like 
uh, history, and I like, I grew up during the 60s and 70s, so the 50s, you know, were, of course, right around the corner. For me, I could, I, I enjoy history of television, um, I, I enjoy seeing old black and white TVs, I enjoy finding out how um, live television worked and directing it and all the technical aspects, and that's what this book deals with, a lot of technical aspects of putting on a TV show and the personalities behind it. So my only question is, I can't show you that picture, the Le Mans Network, yeah, let's see, can I show you, no, I can't show you that. Uh, Okay, I can show you this. Uh, there's a lot of stuff I can't show you because it in involves uh, a guy that his father ends up dying and he wants to know how his father died and the only evidence he has is a box full of scantily clad women that his father took pictures of. So it deals with some kinky stuff that we get into here. Um, let's see, can I show you this? Yeah. Um, so it does deal with some kinky stuff, but it deals with very technical aspects of what it's like to put on a television program back in the 50s, dealing with the FCC, dealing with um, all the personalities and stuff. So I don't know that I can recommend it to everyone because you have to be interested in the history of television to kind of really get it. I'm actually kind of surprised that this warranted getting an oversized hardcover. It's beautiful. I love it. I loved reading the book. It gets a solid 5 out of 5 root beers for, from me because I dug it so much. But I think that you guys out there, if you're hesitant at all, you should probably download some copies from the internet, from Comixology or wherever you get uh, comics. And give it a test run because... It, it does have um, some technical aspects of it that can be confusing, um, and it has an awful lot of characters. There's a whole cast of characters that you do need to pay attention to, um, and you need to try and figure out where they're going, what they're doing, how they're doing it, and things like that. Um, so there's a, there's a couple of mysteries, a couple of exciting plot points that are going on during it that you have to follow. Um, lot, uh, the most important thing is the characters are well developed enough that you actually care about them, which is good because there's a lot of characters and there's a lot going on in this book. But as I said, you may want to download it, check it out first before you spend the dosh on a whole oversized hardcover of this book, which was Satellite Sam, by the way. It has no identifying markings on it except for that flimsy little dust jacket that comes with it. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Please subscribe. Please give me a like. Uh, I respond to all comments. And you can also see me on Instagram on Omnidogs underscore vault. And uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I hope I enlightened you to some comic books that you'd like. Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you in a few.